Hello and welcome to today's um, video. We will be reading in Ezekiel and Matthew. All right. Let's start with Ezekiel. Ezekiel 45. Ezekiel 44 was about the new the new law and the closed gate. And a bunch of other categories. Okay. When you when you apportion the land into inheritances, you shall set apart a sacred tract of land for the Lord, 25,000 cubits long and 20,000 wide. Its whole area shall be sacred. Of this land, a square plot, 500, 500 by 500 cubits, surrounded by a free space of 50 cubits, shall be assigned to the sanctuary. From this, th from this sector, measure off a strip, 25,000 cubits long and 10,000 wide, within which shall be the sanctuary, the Holy of Holies. This shall be the sacred part of the land belonging to the priests, the ministers of the sanctuary who draw near to minister to the Lord. It shall be a place for their homes and pasture land for their cattle. And there shall be a strip 25,000 cubits long and 10,000 wide as property for the Levites, the ministers of the temple, that they may have cities to live in. As property of the city, you shall distinguish this designate a, a strip 5,000 cubits wide and 25,000 long, par parallel to the sacred track. This shall belong to the whole house of Israel. The prince shall have a track and city property. Oh, the prince shall have a section bordering on both sides of the combined sacred track and city property, extending westward on the western side and eastward on the eastern side corresponding in length to one of the tri tribal portions of the western boundary to the eastern boundary of the land. This shall be his property in Israel, so that the princes of Israel will no longer oppress my people, but will leave the land of the house of Israel according to their tribes. Thus says the Lord God, Enough, you, uh, enough, you princes of Israel. Put away violence and oppression and do what is right and just. Stop evicting my people, says the Lord God. You shall have honest scales, an honest alpha, and an honest liquid measure. The alpha and the liquid measure shall be of the same size. The liquid measure equal to a tenth of a, a homer, and the alpha equal to a tenth of a homer. By the homer they shall be determined. The shekel shall be tw 20 gars. 20 shekels, 25 shekels, plus 15 shekels shall be your mine, mi mina. These are the, the offerings you shall make. One sixth of an elf, elf, alpha, alpha from each homer of wheat, and one sixth of an alpha from each homer of barley. The regulation for oil. For every m measure of oil, a tenth of a of a measure computed by the core of 10 liquid measures or a homer for 10 liquid measures make a homer one sheep from the flock for every 200 for every 200 from the pasture of Israel for sacrifice holocaust and peace offerings and anointment sacrifices says the Lord God all the people of the land shall be bound to this offering for the prince of Israel and is for the prince in Israel it shall be the duty of the prince to provide the holocaust, seal offerings, and liberations on the feasts, new moons, and Sabbaths, on all the festivals of the house of Israel. Sh he shall offer his sin offerings, seer offerings, holocaust, and peace offerings to make atonement on behalf of the house of Israel. Hold on one second. I accidentally dro dropped my bookmark. Thus says the Lord God, On the first day of the first month you shall use an unblemished young bull as sacrifice to purify the sanctuary. Then the priest shall take some of the blood from the sin offering and put it on the door steps post of the temple and the four corners of the ledge of the altar 
and on the doorposts over the gates of the inner court. You shall repeat this on the first day of the seventh month for those who have sinned through advertence or ignorance. Thus you may make atonement for the temple. The fourteenth day of the first month you shall observe the feast of the Passover. For seven days unleavened bread is to be eaten. From that day the prince shall offer on his own behalf, on behalf of all the people of the land, a bull as a sin offering. On each of the seven days of the feast he shall offer as a whole cast to the Lord seven bulls and seven rams without blemish. And as a sin offering he shall offer one male goat each day. As a cereal offering, he shall offer one alpha, alpha for each bull and one alpha for each cup, for each ram, and he shall offer him, uh, of him, offer one hen of oil for each alpha. On the first fifteenth day of the seventh month, the feast day, and for seven days he shall perform the same rites, making this the sin offering, sin, same sin offerings. Same holocaust, the same sort of offerings and offerings of oil. That was about well, a lot of for me it was rules for the um priests, I could, I guess um I would say. And the prince. All right, now we'll be moving on to Matthew. Uh, unless actually, you know what? We'll do another Ezekiel. Ezekiel forty six. Thus says the Lord God, The gate toward the east of the inner court shall remain closed throughout the six working days, but on the Sabbath and on the day of the new moon it shall be opened. The prince shall enter from outside by way of the vestibule of the gate and remain standing at the doorpost of the gate. Of the gate. Then while the priests offer the holocaust of peace offering, he shall worship at the threshold of the gate and then leave. The gate shall not be closed until evening. The people of the Lord shall worship before the Lord at the door of this gate on the Sabbath and new moons. The whole cast which the priest presents to the Lord on the Sabbath shall consist of six unblemished lambs and an unblemished ram, together with a cereal offering of one alpha for the ram, whichever he pleases for the lambs, and a can of oil for each alpha. On the day of the new moon, he shall provi provide an unblemished young bull, also six lambs and, and a ram without blemish, with a cereal offering of one alpha for the bull and one for the ram, for the lambs as much as he has at hand, and each alpha a hint of oil. The prince shall always enter, depart by the vestibule of the gate. When the people of the land enters, enter the presence of the Lord to worship on the festivals, they enter by the north gate, sh they shall leave by the south gate. And if they enter by the south gate, they shall leave by the north gate. No one shall return by the gate which, with which he e has entered, but he shall leave by the opposite gate. The prince shall be in their midst when they enter, and he shall also leave with them. On the feast of festivals, festivals, cereal offering shall be an alpha for, for, for a bull and an alpha for a ram. For the lambs, as much as one pleases, and a hint of oil with each alpha. When the prince makes a free will offering to the Lord, whether whole casts or peace offerings, the eastern gate shall be opened for him, and she, he shall offer his whole cast or his peace offerings as on the Sabbath. Then he shall leave, and the gate shall be closed after his departure. He shall offer a, as a daily ho holocaust to the Lord an unblemished yearling lamb. This he shall offer every morning. With it, every morning he shall provide a, as a cereal offering one-sixth of an alpha, with a third of a hint of oil to mo moisten the fine flour. The cereal offering to the Lord is mandatory with the established holocaust. holocaust. The lamb, the cereal, off the cereal offering, and the oil are to be used every morning as an established holocaust. Thus says the Lord God, If the prince makes a gift of part of his inheritance to any of his sons, it shall belong to his sons. That property is theirs by inheritance. But if he makes a gift of part of his inheritance to one of his servants, it shall belong to the latter only until to the latter until only the the year of release, when it shall revert to the prince. Only the inheritance given to his sons is permanent. Permanent. The prince shall not seize any part of the inheritance of the people by evicting them from their property. 
Oh, sorry. He shall provide an inheritance for his sons from his own property, so that none of my people will be driven from their property. Then he brought me by the entrance, which is on the side of the gate, to the chambers of the sanctuary, preserved to the priests, which face the north. There at their west I saw a place concerning which he had said to me, Here the priest cooks cook the guilt offerings and the sin offerings, bake the cereal offerings, so that they do not have to take them out them into the outer court at the risk of transmitting holiness to the people. Then he led me into the outer court and had me pass around the four corners of the court. I saw in each corner there was another court. In the four corners of the court, minor courts, 40 cubits long and 30 wide, and all four of them were of the same size. A wall of stone surrounded each of the four, and hearts were built beneath the stones all the way around. He said to me, these are the kitchen where the temple ministers cook the sacrifices of the people. That was more about like different how things are set up and laws. So that's what I got out of it. <laughs> but I don't know if mine is right. So I always like to read things over and over again so that to make sure that I I so that I can kind of always resync my decision. Of what I think it's about. Okay. Matthew 13. On that day, uh, in Matthew 12, is about a lot of different teachings and healings. All right. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep, and when the sun rose, it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on, fell on rich soil and produced good fruit, produced fruit, a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. Then the disciples approached him and said, Why do you speak to them in parables? He said to them in reply, Because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been granted to you, but to them it has not been granted. To anyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. From anyone who has not, even what he has will be, ta will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because they look but do not see and hear but do not listen or understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them, which says, You shall indeed hear, but not understand. You shall indeed look, but never see. Gross is the heart of this people. They will hardly hear with their ears. They have closed their eyes, lest they, he lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and be, and be converted, 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 and I will heal them. But blessed are your eyes, because they see, and your ears, because they hear. Amen, I say to you, many prophets and righteous people longed to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Hear the parable of the sower. The seed sown on the path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it, and the evil one comes and steals away what, wi what was sown in his heart. The seed on, sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives that at once with joy. But he has no roots and lasts only for a time. When some tribulation or persecution comes because of the wor word, he immediately falls away. The seed sown among thorns is the one who hears the word, but the worldly anxiety and the allure of riches chokes the word and it bears no fruit. The seed, seed sown on rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it. Yet who indeed bears fruit and yields a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. <laughs> he, propo he proposed another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all throughout the wheat and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where have the weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. His slave said to him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? 
replied, no. If you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. Then at harvest time, I will say to the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. He proposed another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that is that a person took and sowed into a field in, in a in a field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, yet when full grown it is the largest of plants. Becomes uh, it becomes a large bush, and the birds of the sky shall dwell in its branches. He spoke to them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch was leavened. All these things Jesus spoke to the crowds in, a par in parables. He spoke to them only in parables to fulfill what had been said through the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will announce what has lain hidden from the foundations of foundation of the world. Then, dismissing the crowds, he went into the, his, the house. His disciples approached him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He said in reply, He who sows good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, the good seed, the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who so sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will, con will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all who cause others to sin and all evildoers. They will throw them into the fiery furnaces, furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Then the righteous Father will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field. When a person finds him, finds and hides, which a person finds and hides again, and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys in that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, uh, they haul it ashore and sit down to pull what is good into buckets. What is bad, they throw away. Thus it will be at the end of age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Hold on one second. I dropped my bookmark yet again. Okay. Do you understand all these things? They answered, yes. And he replied, then every scribe scribe who has been instructed to the, in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household. Every, okay. It's like the head of, head of a household. The head of a house, a head of a household who brings from his storeroom both the new and the old. When Jesus finished these parables, he went away from there came to his native place and taught the people in their synagogue. They were astonished and said, Where did this man get such wisdom and mighty deeds? Is not the carpenter's is he not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother named Mary and his brother James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? And are not all his sisters all with us? Where did this man get all this? And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place in his own house. Um, and because he did not work, and because and he did not work many deeds there because of their lack of faith. That was about a lot of parables. All right. All right. Let's. Um, I think those two were interesting. I I can't really find as much how it would relate to today. Um. I think there are ways it could relate to today, but they're more be broken up into sections. Um, I probably have to think a lot more about how it all came together. Um, so, yeah. Um, but so I maybe um, I sometimes I really click and the whole reading goes together.
or maybe just the Old Testament and the New Testament. Um, so, um, but right now I, I couldn't really find anything like that. So we'll probably, the next one we read, maybe we'll look at it and it will have something I can look at and I can think about. Um, and maybe I'll, you know, sometimes it just comes to me and I'm like, wait a minute, this kind of looks like today. But, um, since right now it's not coming, let's say a prayer. Dear Lord God, thank you for today, and thank you for letting us read your word, and please help us understand it next time and this time, and please help us put it into action, please help us do your will, please help us do what you want, and also, yeah, in Jesus Christ, your most holy name we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And subject us not to a final test. For that is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. All right. Um, I am... Um, Oh, and one more thing. Dear Lord God, please let help us let this weather get a little cooler. And please send some um, rain, if it be your will. In Jesus Christ, your says, what's my name? I pray, amen. Or we pray, amen. I don't know if about you, but recently it's been very, 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 very hot. Um, so I hope you have a nice cold room um, or have some ice cream, popsicles, anything that could help you potentially stay cool um just can't imagine what it would have if you like when jesus walked through um you know regions that are very hot like deserts i bet i i don't know but i may i would have been hot if i was one of his disciples but i think would have been i would have if it was between hot and following Jesus, I would have followed Jesus and said, I'm going to bear with the heat. I, I'm with Jesus. Um, so I bet a lot of people have a lot harder, um, hotter regions. So, But still, this is pretty hot. So, yeah, stay cool, and I hope to see you next time. Um, you know where to find it. Um, and if and if you're new, I'll just tell it. Uh, it says... Um, Marietta God's Helper, uh, Bible live stream or Bible writing, either one, um, or live. You would probably put live, I think. Um, so, and I really um appreciate uh comments. Um, and if you'd want, I'd love um if you go on Ezekiel, I'd like I would I would be one if it would be fun for you. I, it would be really nice if you could tell me what your favorite chapter in Ezekiel was and why. Um, I'm not really sure yet. I'm not done reading it. So maybe the next time I read, I'll probably have been done it. So maybe you could tell me what your favorite chapter was. Um, that would be fun for me um, to look at. But, yeah. All right. Um... Right. Well, I really appreciate you guys watching. It means a lot to me. And can't wait to see you next time. I'm still in John. Um, um, what chapter? Probably an eight. Probably an eight. Almost to nine, but I'm not sure about that. But, all right. Well, I really appreciate you watching. All right. I'm done. Okay. Let me see if I can get to you where I'm, my bag of writing is. Hold on. Here. Oh, I am in uh, chapter eight. All right. Well, thank you so much. And I really, really do appreciate it. But all right. I can't wait to see you next time. Um, so, yeah. Bye. <laughs>